All right, brother, here's what I do with the bent night. I got my scoop here, and I take, uh, not a full scoop, but maybe a little, little over half. Call it three quarters. I go five gallon pail, like so. I take my five gallon pail over to my hose. Working around with the water here. Make sure you just use the water to mix it. Fill this bucket about halfway. So, to about three quarters of the way, I should say. See, anyhow, I'll fill this up three quarters of the way, check back in in a second. All right, do a little consistency check. You can see that's pretty watery. The worst thing you can do with this stuff is try and use it too wet. It'll just segregate the concrete. Um, so I'm gonna throw this on the pump now, probably about uh, uh, 45 minutes before I get to the job. Uh, it's gonna thicken up a lot. We'll check in when we get there. But uh, yeah, I always mix it beforehand because it likes to sit for about, uh, at least 20 minutes it thickens up over time um, unless you have a, a power drill or access to warm water warm water fattens it up a lot faster a lot quicker um, but yeah usually i'll i'll do this the day before the end of the job throw it on the pump and uh, i'm ready to go for the next day but the last guy who had this out did not do that so anyhow check back in in a second all right buddy here we go on site about a half an hour later and we've got Mixy mixy with the shovel here. That's damn near perfect. Maybe a little bit wet still, but that's gonna tighten up some more. Um, ultimately, you want like an oatmeal type consistency. So I'm gonna get my hoses strung out here. I throw this stuff, I throw the whole bucket. I just throw it right in the elbow here. And uh, yeah, once it's in there, I can let it sit for an hour if I have to. That way, when Ready Mix gets here, backs up to the pump. I've already got my primer in. I get my reducers on. I'm hooked up to the hose, and I'm ready to rock. But uh, we'll get to that in just a jip. Here. All right, man. Well, this stuff's still a little bit thin, so what I'm going to do, i got a bucket of powder here. Just a little smidge on top. Oh, that's more than I wanted, but that'll work. Let's give it a little stir with Mr. Shovel here. That in a bit. If it's a little bit lumpy, that's fine. I actually kind of like that. I have not, no. Alright, so this is what we got. Oatmeal consistency. Try and pinch my phone in my, uh, my mouth here. Not too bad for one hand and my phone in my mouth and not being able to see. Anyhow, you get the idea. Um, so once that bentonite is in there, no stroking of the pump. If you stroke the pump, it's all gonna fall out of the S-tube and back into the hopper, which is uh, which is not good. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put my reducer on. And I tilt it down, but not, and still keep it slightly vertical and I'll hold it with these chains. Hook the hose up, first couple strokes with the reducer still on a slight vertical plane. We'll keep that primer from running ahead of the concrete and down into the hose. Once I get a couple of strokes through the reducer assembly and into the line, I'll loosen the chain and I'll drop the reducer back down. So um, we have these chains because they're required by the ready mix outfits now. We've got to chain up our reducers on the back end uh, in the event that the elbow blows off. The chain keeps it from hitting the driver and the knees. So, All right, so that night is in. We're all hooked up. You can see another reducer on a slight, uh, a slight incline there couple strokes loosen the chains drop it down um, these safety pins here they sell them at uh, the Acklands Granger has them they call them machine safety pins I think these things are the cat's ass I get this bigger size 
for the four inch and five inch clamps and the three inch is smaller i use a smaller size here and the best part about them when the clamps get older and they get kind of sloppy and the holes don't exactly uh they don't line up in the body and the handle for getting a the, the old-fashioned type of safety pin through these things are way better so yeah i highly recommend those for, for line pumping they are wicked um we only got three hoses on here today it's kind of a joke for uh trying to show how well bent night works it's not much of a test here but uh me being the supreme cheap ass that i am i'm actually going to catch the first bit of bent night come out of the hose i'll catch it in the bucket and uh, i will reuse it because this stuff never hardens up i might have to add a little bit of water to it tomorrow or on the next job but aside from that as long as i don't catch a bunch of gravel and segregated concrete uh, you can reuse this stuff over and over and over. It's fantastic that way. So, so let's wait for concrete to show up here and uh, rock and roll. Another good one. I got this from Jeff over at Muddy Feet Concrete Pumping. Uh, these pans, they're from Tractor Supply Company. This should be a part number on there somewhere. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Love these things. They work as a hopper lid already have a lid so they're the perfect size to put over the hopper when you want to pump out they're nice for putting under the elbows under the hopper when you're hooking stuff up to catch any spill and what they're really good for too is i'll even wash out into these things they're uh, they're rigid enough you can carry them and they don't fold in half like the softer rubber pens so i love those pans local ready mix here they make us run this safety mat too it's just a uh, piece of heavy conveyor belting trimmed to size. A couple loops, piece of metal, some brackets welded on. Easy peasy. But they uh, they actually won't back up to the pump if you don't have that. And they can also refuse if you don't have the chains. They're not as sticky about the chains, but the, the mat there, they, uh, if they don't see that, they won't, uh, they won't get near the pump. It's not a bad idea. It kind of happened just because of... Uh, a few guys were letting their elbows run way thinner than they should have and there were some incidents and whatnot so but i guess it's it's never a bad idea a little extra safety measure all right buddy here we go i said couple strokes just to get it through the reducer here one two Hold up for a second here and drop this down. Like that. Mat in place. There we go. Are you ready with the bucket? my friend Caleb. You want to say hi, Caleb? Hi, hi Caleb! Caleb. <laughs> oh, there it is. And... and we'll put the rest on the ground. And that looks like concrete. We're good. Sweet. We'll add some water to that and we'll reuse it on the next, the next one, two, three, four jobs. Aren't we good little cheap skates? It'll never go bad. It'll never go bad. Roger's personal guarantee, it'll never go bad. All right, brothers, so we are done. That's the, uh, the bent night we collected. I could probably make two full five-gallon pails by the time I add more water to that. And uh, I bet you I could get another four or five jobs out of that stuff. I'm careful with it. Now, the stuff in the hopper here, here's bonus content. I remember in your last video, you did uh, done the delay set thing and gone for lunch, and it got a little, little crusty on you. Well, this concrete is absolutely nuclear hot. And I actually don't have a lot of sugar left, but it don't take much. That's about all I got. Dump this into a bucket. Like so, I'll put a bunch of water in that. Go about halfway up this bucket, quarter away, dump it in the hopper, cycle it around. Just like so.
Maybe I'll rinse my little bag out here too, my little sugar bag. Try and catch some residue. This is not easy to do with one hand. There we go, something like that. And we'll throw this in the hopper and cycle it around. Just something like, like that. And I'll throw the hose in here, we'll spin this around, maybe add some water to it. And we'll just take this stuff for a little rip now. Once we get the pump in forward, that is. There we go. And just that little bit of sugar will completely kill this stuff. It really takes very, very little. And I'll just work this stuff around like this about, I don't know, about 20 strokes. Same as we would with delay set, except this was sugar this time, so. Piece of cake. You notice the sugar, as soon as it hits it, it really brings the slump up. Much more so than just water on its own wood. Beautiful. Get that all through the S tube. Mix around real nice. Anyhow, you get the idea. So hopefully the bent knife video helps. Give it a try, uh, just like that, throwing it in the elbow. Um, if I've got more than about, much more than 150 feet of hose, I'll do the full bucket in the elbow and then at about the 150 mark, I'll usually do another bucket. And then I might even throw in a quarter bucket of water ahead of that, uh, that second bucket of bent night. The only thing with the bent night is it can dry out through the hoses and become almost like a bit of a clay type lump. So if you put a little bit of water in front of it, it can help. You just don't want that water to make its way behind the bent night and then segregate your first bit of concrete. So let me know how it goes. Look forward to the uh, to the video. All right, here we go. We're going to go wash out now. Hot mud in the pump. This has been on the ground for 25 minutes. She's cooking. Anyhow, we'll go check in on this hopper here. We're going to drive about half an hour to go wash out. And we'll see how this stuff looks by the time we get there. Sugared up, I bet it'll still be absolute piss. All right, washout time. Let's see what we got. I always crank this elbow down and I'll take a uh, one arm. This is some, this is a workout. Yeah. Crank that down. I always take a couple strokes in forward before I wash out, before I dump my hopper. That way, if I have any segregation or anything on the S tube, I can push it out. Let's see what we got. Crack the hopper door now. Throw it in reverse. Crack the door. Throw the vibe on, flip the lid, see what we got in here. Lock the lid in place. Not too shabby, just a bunch of slop ola. That'll all come out with a hose, watch this. I'll use my water just for demonstrative purposes. Once I get it untangled here. One-handed, again. And I didn't do the dirt under the S-tube today because I'm a naughty little boy and I knew it would be a quick job.
But I did use lots of canola oil. Anyhow, you get the idea. Soft as baby poop. Uh, normally I would use one big fistful of brown sugar. That was a little less than I would normally use, but uh, that was all I had left on the pump today. So, but anyhow, yeah, it works a charm. Use one big full fist, cycle it around 20 strokes. You could uh, you could go for lunch, then have a nap, then maybe watch a, uh, a baseball game, and then wash out the next morning if you really wanted to. So anyhow, that's how I do it. But I really do like those couple strokes in four just to push any crud out of the S tube. Tends to make the washout portion a lot easier.